Hello and welcome to Cloud Force Vibes. My name is Bobby and this is how I grow orchids and carnivorous plants. Hello and welcome to Cloud Forest Vibes. So, if you watched my last video, you already know that I'm in a repotting mode. This is about 10 minutes after you watch me put those Draculas away. So, these are my two new Mastavellias from Tarzane Group. And what we're going to do is we're going to freshen them up, make them look better, and we're going to ensure that both of them stay healthy long term. So, without further ado, we are going to the table. So we have our two massive areas here. We're at the table and we are going to go ahead and get these out of their pots and take a look at them and figure out what we're going to do with this one. This one I already know is going to go on a mount. I've already got it here. I've sprayed it down with Fison and alcohol. I've let it dry and it is safe to proceed. So we're going to go ahead and do that one first. We're going to sit this one to the side and we'll come back and revisit that. So this is our Mastavelia Venatoria. We just got this yesterday and we're going to go ahead and get this out of the pot. We're just going to take the tweezers here, we're going to grab the moss and we're going to lift and maybe pry just a little bit and we're going to get this thing right out. This moss looks brand new. Often with Tarzan you get pretty much freshly repotted or remounted orchids. It is a really good thing so we're probably going to go ahead and reuse this moss. This actually looks a lot like our live red sphagnum moss, so we are not going to let this go to waste. Yeah, it's, that's fresh. That is absolutely fresh moss. So our plant has roots. That's a good thing. Growing root tips and a healthy looking rhizome. We're going to clean it up just a little bit and we'll be back. So. We've got the bulk of the moss off. This plant actually did split up into two. So we're going to take some fresh clean water. We're going to spray it down right at the base of the rhizome because there is some old moss there. And when you get it really wet, it seems to come off a whole lot easier. So we're going to spray them down quite good. I've got kind of the jet on. That alone sometimes knocks some of that moss right off. So that's a nice tip I can give you guys. And then another tip I can give you guys is take a pair of, I use aquascaping tweezers um, and they're really thin, they're really fine and I use them kind of like a comb and I will go through and pick at the moss and stuff that's at the base and free it after it's been moistened down. It really is an effective method. You can use it to get in the tight cracks, pull pieces out, and do things that are otherwise impossible with your fingers. So that's what we're going to do here with both of these little pieces and I will be back once we are all cleaned up and show you what we've got. So we have our two pieces of Massivelia Venatoria right here they have cleaned up pretty nice. We have some valid roots on both of them. I've seen a little bit better, but I've also seen a lot worse, so I'm glad I did not leave that in that pot for any longer because in my environment this stuff would go down quite quickly. And I'm happy I see new growth on both plants, both sections. And what we're going to do, just because I'm a freak about things, is we're going to give both plants a nice spray with some mild Fison solution. If you guys are fortunate enough to be able to get a hold of Fison, I recommend it. It's really nice. I use it um, pretty much like most people would use hydrogen peroxide or things like that. So I use it as a disinfectant. I don't have much luck with it as an insecticide. However, I'm sure it's not good for bugs, especially soft-bodied insects. Um, I am struggling with a few insects at this time in my tent, but that's going to be a whole other video. I'm working on a solution and I've been talking to a whole lot of other orchid people 
including my great friend <laughs> Brenda over at Orchid Delirium and she just recommended a product who, that I really do want to try. Um, my friend Joe Perpetual Irish at Instagram, he's all, also recommended the same product so I'm pretty much convinced at this point that's the way to go and uh, again that's a whole other video so anyhow so now we have our two sections really well sprayed with our Fizen 20 for plants if you follow the regular dosing instructions it's a really good product again there's a formula for plants there's a formula for surfaces there's a plant a formula for just about anything you can use it for in a greenhouse or a growing application and it's really good stuff just don't get it near your animals especially fish reptiles things like that um, my dog is insisting on chewing her bone in the background which I've just realized so if you hear that noise that is her so I would probably keep that away from her as well which means I have to shoo her away so please give me a moment and we'll be right back to mount this plant <laughs> Sheba go go good girl so we're back again as you might have noticed I have pulled out the live red sphagnum moss so we are going to go ahead and get this mount ready. I'm going to get my fishing line. I'm going to pull off a healthy section of it. Give it a snip. And get it prepped and ready to go onto this mount. Again, you are never going to see this. I will have to do a better video on this one day. But I tie a surgeon's loop. Just like that. So I make a loop with a long tail end, if you can see that I hope, a loop with a long tail end and then I put the tail end and the very very long end that I'm going to be wrapping around the mount through the loop and I make kind of a lasso out of my fishing line and that is the easiest way you can possibly ever put line on a mount. So I get it wrapped around the mount, I make sure my, my loop and my knot are in the back and it will create that V that once you pull around the opposite way and eventually are ready to tie off, you will slip it through that V and have something to tie off. My dog is just off the hook. You will have something to tie off with. So. Let me remove my dog again, and we will be back. <laughs> oh my god. Blooper reel. Hey, I love you so much. Let's move this. Let's go somewhere else. Can we go somewhere else? I love you. Look at that. Over here. Oh my gosh. Phenomenal. Okay, so we're back again. <laughs> phone call. Hi mom. Hi, what are you doing? I am filming an orchid video. What are you doing? Well, sometimes it never stops. <laughs> Alrighty, so we're back again, again, and we're going to go ahead. I've already got my line tied around our mount. Hopefully you saw that. And we're going to go ahead and take this mount, uh, take this moss, Again, I am convinced this is the exact same thing we're going to get ready to put on it. And we're going to go ahead and put this on our mount. Notice I have a really gnarly, creviced, awesome looking miniature little mount. I've been dying to use this one. I've been waiting for the right time. And I just think that this is going to be a really good candidate for it. So we're going to take this. We're going to spread it across this little mount right here. And we're going to make a bed that we're going to go ahead and mount this orchid right to. Then we're going to take some of our red sphagnum moss, our really established at this point in time growing red sphagnum, and we're going to cut some tips off and we're going to mount it around the root tips that are going to be exposed on this moss. And we're going to really hope that this thing takes off. It's going to have a whole lot of oxygen, a whole lot of moisture, and a whole lot of everything it needs to be happy 
as a cool to intermediate grower in my rather warm environment. So let's get this going. I'm going to go ahead and get one piece. Let's get the bigger piece. I am going to get it on here. Then I'm going to take the smaller piece and stick it on right next to it. Again, I'm going to be very careful not to crush anything. I'm not going to compress the moss too much while I'm doing this. I really just want this plant to be fastened on. I'm going to adjust the roots a little bit so I can make sure that they're all touching moss. Do one nice wrap around them down here at the base. Again, without constricting too tightly. I hope I'm not blocking too much of this with my hands. And we're going to go from there. So, let's see. We're going to do a wrap. Oh, my dog is really killing me. We're going to do a wrap around the top. We're going to kind of get that moss situated a bit up there. Oh my gosh. And then we're going to take a quick pause so we can trim off some of this moss here. Um, you know what? Let's just try to pull some out. Let's see how it's going, because I don't know if you can see that or not, but we're getting some pretty established moss, but it's a nice thin layer, so I think maybe we can just take a section out and then kind of wiggle it around and go from there. So I'm going to pull for this corner. It's a really nice establishing section, and we're just going to go ahead and lift and kind of tear it out. Yeah, that's going to be a nice little chunk. Then, we'll just kind of press it back down and then move it around a bit. The moss doesn't really mind. Get it packed back down a bit. And yeah, that'll go right back in the greenhouse and we'll be back to get this little section onto our mount. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. I did all that with a beer and frame. Look at that. Sorry ladies and gentlemen, my dog has driven me to drink. That's why that was there. I apologize. <laughs> wow. This is all staying in the video too. How about that? So, we have our little chunk of sphagnum moss. We're going to gently break it apart just a little bit. Um, it's like a puzzle. You just got to kind of work with it. To a couple pieces. Just like that. And we're going to go ahead and place that on the mount and get it secured on there. Again, we're using the live red sphagnum that we've got. Again, from Tarzane Group. Same people who this orchid came from. And I really like this moss because it seems to be a lot more compact growing than some of the live green sphagnum that I have. So we're going to get a nice section of it. We're going to place it over the roots here on the bottom. Make sure they're nice and covered up so they stay hydrated. And it's going to give this moss a chance because it's got a nice bed of moss already. So both the, uh, both the orchid and the moss will stay nice and hydrated. get that moss secured. Oop. We're already falling off a bit, so let's get that moss secured with one wrap here at the bottom. And adjust it up towards the base, but not smothering the plant. 
There's one thing with moss you do not want to do. You do not want to smother the plant too much. Do not like that. This is the time where if you see something you don't like, you really want to tend to it immediately. Do not let things go. You're already in the mix. You're already doing what you want to do with the plant. So take the opportunity and make sure that you capitalize on it. Now that's it. We've got a nice section of moss growing around the base. I'm actually going to add a little bit more in there because I can see some roots. I do not want to see roots. And again, I'm not constricting the moss too much. I'm leaving lots and lots of air around the base of this plant. That is so, so important. So, it took a minute. I struggled a bit. But we now have the uh, brand new Mazzavilla Venatoria right here on our beautiful new mount with live moss ready to go into the orchidarium. So I'll put this in the grow room and we'll come back and check this one out. Okay, so we're back with our final orchid. This is ready to come out of the pot. My dog is taking a drink now. She is really off the hook today. Give it a little squeeze and get it right out of that pot. Again, fresh moss. Definitely potted very recently, which is a good thing, which means we can probably reuse this stuff. And again, that looks like our live red sphagnum. So, awesome. Uh, we have some roots. We do need a little bit of cleanup, but not much, and uh, I'm really happy. Yeah, we have a good looking plant, so I'm going to get this cleaned up. We'll be right back, and we'll get it into this pot. So I'm here with the uh, cleaned up Mastavilla Garcia, and unfortunately, it looks like we have taken a, quite a toll with the heat. So this plant is in great shape, but it did sit for an extra day in shipment or in shipping and I do believe that the media dried out and because of that it really took a toll on this plant's roots so we did hopefully catch it in time however this plant broke apart into five sections so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take three sections we're gonna pot it into our media and we're gonna take these two sections here and I think we're gonna go ahead and mount it with the live moss. So having that said, let me go ahead and get everything ready and I'll be right back in just a few minutes and we'll go ahead and get this orchid situated. So we've got our pot that it came in. I put just a teeny bit of moss down in the bottom of that thing. Actually I'm going to actually thin that out a bit. So I've put just a tiny bit of moss down in the bottom of that thing just to help catch some of the stuff. And we're gonna go ahead and start backfilling a bit with our media. This one we're gonna fill right up quite a bit. Especially being that we have a root issue. We wanna make sure that we have a bed of nice chunky stuff mixed in with the moss, really light and fluffy so we can get our plant situated and in there and it can grow on and hopefully be happy so having that said we're going to take our three plants we're going to sit them down in the pot a bit and we're going to take our media and we're going to backfill around them again I want to make sure that I'm not compacting this media. We do want it to stay moist, but we really do not want this plant to be overwhelmed, especially seeing as how we have a root issue. All right, so this is our new pot for the three sections of Mastavelia Garcia. It's got a lot more room to breathe. Hopefully it's gonna do okay. Again, whenever you get an orchid that comes in a rootless state or 
with damaged roots, especially from shipping from heat, like a Mastavelia, that is pretty much guaranteed for a uphill situation. So we're going to keep a close eye on it and we'll go from there, but we still have these two sections to go, so let me find a piece of cork and we're going to go ahead and get these two little sections mounted and I will throw this in the grow room and we'll be back. So we have a mount ready. We're going to go ahead and get our string ready because this orchid is definitely going to go on this piece of cork and I'm going to give it a shot in our orchidarium because we have another division. It's going to be growing in the tent. So hopefully we can get one, if not both, of these divisions to survive. We're going to take this lovely, fresh, live sphagnum moss that the orchid came with and we're going to give it a nice section. Look, bonus, we got some leftover. So, we're going to go ahead and we're going to rob just another little corner of our established moss. That should be enough. And we're going to go ahead and take this and we're going to stuff it right back down in that corner. So, yeah, that should replace what we've taken out and over a little bit of time, that should turn into that and we'll have more moss. So, we have a little bit of a revolving door of moss and that is not a bad thing. We've got our mount, we've got our preliminary layer of moss. We're going to go ahead and make a couple turns just to get that on there a little bit better. I will do one more. And then we're going to go ahead and get our plant situated on the mount. Got a new growth there. And one on that side, so we'll put the plant together like that. We're going to go ahead and get it fastened on there. Then we're going to take our live moss, we're going to break it up just a little bit. We're going to put a layer around the base. We're going to give it a couple turns to secure that on there. So we're going to go ahead and get this tied on. And that is that. So we have our freshly mounted other division of Mastavelia Garcia with live moss, which may need a little bit of love, but I think it's going to do well. I'm hoping it's going to do well. And that's that. So. Let's take this into the grow room and we'll take a look at both plants and get them put away. So it's late. Um, I finally got both of these guys done, but it was kind of a struggle. My dog is still wreaking havoc on my videos, but I love her to death. And we're just going to go ahead and get these put away and call it a night. I'm going to go ahead and sign off. The lights in both the tank and the greenhouse, the tent I mean, are both off. So you already know it's late, so <laughs> we are signing off on a rather stressful but successful remounting and repotting and I will check in with you guys later and we will see exactly where these guys end up and how they're doing. But for now, hopefully we've saved them and that's that. So thank you guys so much for watching. I do appreciate it and until next time, happy growing.